So if we go ahead and open up our $100 box of nickels right here, the coin right on the end is already going to be a keeper, but that's not the end of it. If we flip it over to the other side, we have a coin that may even be older than that. That would make this roll right here the elusive double ender. Let's flip it over, see if we got at least something pre-60s. Three, two, Oh, there we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Coin Quest. That, of course, being the series where I take $100 boxes and nickels like this, go through the rolls in the boxes looking for interesting and valuable coins that I can use to fill in my collection books. Now, today's box of nickels has something very unique that I've only seen a handful of times. Let's go ahead and take a look. So if we go ahead and open up our $100 box of nickels right here and take a look at this roll, the coin right on the end is already going to be a keeper, 1959. We keep anything before 1960, but that's not the end of it. If we flip it over to the other side, we have a coin that may even be older than that. And we do have, you can just barely see it there, but there is a Denver Mint mark sneaking through the paper there on the right-hand side of the Monticello. I am super hopeful that this is going to be either a 1938 Denver or a 1939 Denver. Those are both super rare and we still need those in our collection. So granted that this coin ends up being a keeper, that would make this roll right here the elusive double ender, which you barely ever see. And then on top of that, we do have one more ender which may be interesting if you take a look right there. That definitely looks older. It doesn't have a mint mark, but it certainly could be pre-60s, which would make it a keeper in our book. Speaking of books, this is the main collection album that we're looking to fill out today. We filled it out almost completely, guys. Take a look at this. Like I said earlier, we do need that 38 Denver, 39 Denver. Those are key dates. Very difficult to find. We need a whole bunch of silver war nickels, but then on top of that, the only other coin we need is that 1949S, which has still escaped us so far. I can't believe we have already found two 1950 Denvers, still no 1949S, and a whole bunch of war nickels missing. So hopefully we can get something into the collection today. That is the goal. Of course, as always, we'll be using the Quinn's Coins Nickel Roll Hunting Placemat to aid us in our nickel roll hunt today. This placemat features all the different types of nickels that you can find in your nickel rolls across the front. Then flipping it on over to the backside, we have a point system which we use to rate these boxes as we go through them in the Coin Quest series. We also have super helpful lists of key date, low mintage, and low mintage buffalo nickels, which are gonna help you identify a rare coin if you find one that you're not sure about. Of course, if you're interested in picking up one of these placemats to aid you in your own nickel roll hunting, you can head on over to my website at quinscoins.com and I'll put links down in the description below. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this hunt and see what we're going to get on that double ender roll. All right, guys, here we go. I got our double ender right here. We got our Denver reverse end there, 1959 right there. This is certainly going to be the more interesting one though, because there's really no rare dates to look for in the 59. You just have the 59 plane and the 59 Denver. These are really the ones that you want to look for though. You can see key dates. We have the 38D and the 39D. Those two we still need in the collection. So hopefully we can grab that right off the end here. And that will be just a very nice start to the hunt. So we'll go ahead and just break into this end, I think, and uh, see if we can grab that one off the end and just make it a really great find right off the bat. So there we go, guys, getting into it there. You can see much clearer now the Denver reverse on the right-hand side of the Monticello there. I'll just grab that coin, and I am almost positive this is going to be pre-1960s. If not, I would be very surprised. Let's get a 38 here, guys. Three, two, one. All right, 54, that's not too bad, I'll take it. It's not gonna be a low mintage or anything, definitely not going into the collection, but it is pre-60s, so can't be mad at it. I guess we can just grab that uh, other ender now. Let's see if any of these edges are going to be looking interesting to us. It's been a while since we found a silver war nickel, which as you guys saw earlier, we do need quite a few of those in the collection still, so. All right, let's grab that 1959 off of the opposite end. It is nice to start us off with uh, two keepers right off the bat. There it is, our 1959, and all of its glory and flipping it over to the backside to see that we also have a Denver on that one as well. So two 1950s Denver coins right there. It's kind of funny because the 1950 Denver is the key date of the Jefferson Nichols series. And uh, that's not what we have there, but uh, still kind of interesting if you think about it. We got a kind of weird looking coin right here. It almost looks older, but I want to say it's just really worn down. Probably going to be a newer coin, but just for the... Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, 1940. So uh, sort of common for the older Jeffersons, but that is the oldest one we've got today. So definitely can't complain about it. Hopefully we can crack the 30s, get it like a 38, a 39 would be just amazing. Maybe even get a little further back and find ourselves a Buffalo nickel. All right, let's see guys. That is, well, we got three keepers on this one roll. So that is just absolutely amazing. Everything else in here though looks new. So I'll check here to see if we have any 2009s. Those are lower mintage and we are always on the lookout for those. There's an 08 right there there but uh, if not then I'll get back to you guys with that other ender all right guys no 2009 so we'll get into our second ender which you can see right here 
Definitely an older looking reverse right there. Maybe we'll grab ourselves a 1950 plane. I mean, there's no mint mark on this one, which is unfortunate because usually the key dates and low mintages have mint marks, but uh, every once in a while they don't. So, all right, I am actually really liking the color on this coin right here. Could we get a war nickel? No, that's gonna be 1974. All right, I believe this is our ender. So let's grab that one. Yep, it definitely is. So there is that older looking reverse Monticello. Let's flip it over, see if we got at least something pre-60s, hopefully back into the 30s or so. Here we go, three, two, one. Oh, there we go. That is amazing, guys. 1939. As far as Philadelphia coins go, this is definitely one of the ones that you want to get. And there's actually a really cool air to look out for on this one. It would be doubling on Monticello and five cents. I'll go ahead and throw a picture up to the left there so you can see that. You don't even need a microscope to see it though. It is very, very obvious. And I have found one before. It's probably one of the, if not the best coins that I've ever found coin roll hunting. And uh, I didn't even realize it until many years later. Of course, I keep all the 1939s, was going back through them and found that I did have a 1939 double die. I don't believe this one has it. You would definitely see it heavily on like the double L there in Monticello, you'd be seeing a quad L instead of a double L, let's just put it that way. But that is still amazing, guys. Getting back to 1939, it definitely gives me hope for this box. Maybe we'll get a 39 Denver. All right, let's go ahead and pour out the rest of the coins in this roll and see what we got, if anything's going to uh, pique our interest right off the bat here. Obviously, if we saw a Buffalo nickel, it would be pretty obvious, but uh, I'm not seeing anything too crazy yet. So we'll just kind of Go through them real quick here, and if nothing pops out here, then we'll just get into the next roll and see what else we can find. So everything's looking pretty new except for this one right here. I think this might have a chance of being a pre-60s. Man, we're off to a great start, guys. I'm very excited to see what else this box holds. Let's see if that one's going to be anything for us. Nah, 64. Wasn't going to slow reveal that one because I wasn't feeling too confident about it. All right, guys, I'll double check these for 2009s. And if nothing else, we'll go ahead and get out of the next roll. So for those of you who like to keep score, we got 250s, 140, and one 1939. So that is going to come out to, what, 13 points on two rolls? That is an incredible start. You rarely see something like that. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, enders certainly help, you know. But let's see what's going to be in roll number three if anything. Let's see if we can keep our uh, streak of fines in every roll up here and get something in roll number three. So just a brief check here. Oh, I'm not seeing too much here, guys. This might be our first roll of the hunt without anything in it. So I'll double check those and uh, see if we can get anything. Doesn't look like it right off the bat though. All right, looks like roll number three is a dud. So moving on to roll number four, let's see what else we can find. All right, breaking into roll number four, we got some interesting color here, but it looks like just some water damage, I'm gonna say. Let's see if there's anything else. Ooh, that one kinda came apart on me. I was trying to grab one out of the roll that looked like it could be a war nickel, but I think, oh yeah, that is definitely something that looks older. Also a super blue coin for some reason. Uh, yeah, maybe a couple of these actually. Let's grab this one first. I like to work right to left here. So let's see if that's going to be anything. No, 1995, not even close. This one on the other hand does have a Denver mint mark. So it's at least as old as 64. Let's see if it's going to be older. Three, two, one. Oh, 54. Once again, so we got a 54 Denver for the second time with some really gross stuff. Man, that looks almost like a, like a sci-fi movie, like the brains are coming out of uh, old Thomas Jefferson there. Unbelievable uh, damage pattern, I guess you could say. I don't know if that stuff will come off or not cleanly anyway, but uh, interesting find right there. I'll take it though. It's another two points on the Quinn's Coins score sheet. Got a nice uh, bright blue coin right there. Oh, and it's yellow on the other side. Look at that, maize and blue. That's pretty cool. All right, let's keep moving here. See if we're gonna get anything else. It doesn't look like nothing's really catching my eye, but I'll double check and let you know. All right, once again, got some color going on here but that is going to be nothing okay wait a minute we got something here i think it's going to be canadian and that could actually be good because we do have a canadian collection this one looks really shiny oh you know what guys i think i know what this is i think this is going to be a 99.9 percent .9 nickel canadian nickel so that puts it pre-1981 i mean just based on the shine of it it definitely looks different than your typical Canadian nickel, which has that 75% copper, I believe, 25% nickel combination, something similar to that. I'll put up the actual combination on the screen, but do you see that shine? 
That is beautiful. All right, I think we may need this one in the collection. We'll flip it over, see what the date is first, and then check in the collection to see if we need it. That's one way to get a coin into the collection. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, 1982, does that mean? Is it going to be? I don't know, I think the cutoff is 1981, but this is just the most shiny nickel I think I've ever seen in my life, at least from Canada. I don't know, are there proof Canadian nickels? I never really considered that. But man, look at the shine on that one. It's almost got like a mirror-like finish, unless it's got, uh, maybe it was plated, I don't know. Very cool find though, regardless. I think this may be a proof, just looking at the way that it's shining like that. Let me know down in the comments below if you know, are there proof Canadian nickels and did we just find one? I'll have to check if we have the 82 or not in the collection. Let's go ahead and do that now. Let me grab our Canadian five cent collection from 65 to 2012, and I think it should just be right here on this first page. Oh no, it actually needs to go onto the second page. So yeah, we do have a 1982. You can see this one is in much worse shape than the one that we just found. So I think I'll be replacing this one right here. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and just do that right now. Get this thing out of here. We'll add that to our regular Canadian coins that we found. But yeah, you can see massive improvement right there on that one. The nice, nice shine on that 82. Just a beautiful coin and a nice addition to the collection. Now let's see if there's gonna be anything else uh, in this roll. All right, they kind of went all over the place. Let's just check though real quick to see if anything pops for us here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it, so. With that being, oh wait, we got a Denver there, it's a 63. All right, let's check for 2009s and then get into the rest. All right, what do we got going on here? This looks a little old. Uh, nope, 62. How about that one? That one looks old as well. Older looking reverse there, we'll see if it's, oh yeah, we got a Denver on that one as well. All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, 64, that's kind of what I figured. All right, what do we got here? Nice shiny coin, could be proof? Nope, 2022. I should be looking out for 2023s as well. I just remembered we still need 2023s in the collection. We don't have those yet. I don't think 2024s are out yet, so that shouldn't really be a concern. There's a 64. All right, I don't think we have anything in here, but oh wait, no, we might. This one is definitely older looking. Again, I don't see a mint mark on it, but it has the look, if you know what I mean. If you hunted nickels for a while, you know what I'm talking about. Let's see if we got something here, guys. Three, two, one nice oh that's pretty cool 1942 guys that is the first year of war nickels they made them out of partial silver i believe 35 percent silver this one is not silver though you can tell because it does not have a mint mark up above the monticello there so 42 was the transitional year they made some just regular 1942 nickels and then they made some with the mint marks up on top with that different composition so would be great to get the silver kind. I think the 42 Denver non-silver variety is a little bit more rare, but uh, I will definitely take this as well. It's definitely a cool one to find. 42 you don't get too often. All right, let's keep looking, guys. See what else we can get. All right, I like the color on that one. I don't know if you guys can see that too well. It could be something. Maybe a... I don't know. No, I guess not. I gave that one a kind of a low chance, but it certainly looked better than some of the other ones we've seen. Let's see if anything else is gonna pop out of this roll. There's a nice older looking coin right there. Got a Denver reverse on that bad boy. Let's see if we're gonna get something here. Nah, 64, that's all right. Let's see what else we got. All right, coming up on another Denver reverse here. That could be good. Hopefully like a 38 or 39 would be just perfect. Let's see what we get here, guys. Three, two, 158, okay, it's getting back there. So that's another two point coin. Definitely got some damage on it, even corrosion, I would say. But uh, another 50s coin right there. We're trucking her along here at a decent pace. It's definitely not what it was in the beginning when we had 13 points on two rolls, but uh, I'll take it, you know. We're getting some cool stuff. Got a 1942, a nice maize and blue coin, which is just an interesting find. Certainly never found anything like that before. Let's see what else we can get it here in this next roll. All right, we got a Denver here. Still no 2023s that I've seen. Maybe we can get ourselves an older coin. Let's see what we got on that. Oh no, that's not what we're looking for. 1960s are no good. All right, once again, we have two Denver reverses right there. We'll save those. We'll take another look real quick just to make sure nothing crazy's popping out. Well, I think that is probably the most interesting stuff here, so. Let's see what we got. I doubt both of these are gonna be pre-60s. At least one of them doesn't look so good, but let's flip them just in case. There's a 64. 
0 for 1 and 0 for 2, 64. All right, let's keep going. I don't know what the heck happened, but this coin was like over here at the top of the table. It must have rolled out of the roll, but we have right here a 1955, which if we have no mint mark on it on the reverse side, that would be a key date. We don't need it in the collection, but it's a heck of a fine. I don't know what it was doing over there. It must have rolled away. I'll have to rewind the camera to see exactly what happened, but 1955, we're looking for no mint mark, guys. Nothing on the right-hand side of the Monticello. Can we get it for a key date here? Let's see. Three, two, one. No, unfortunately, it's a Denver. Nine times out of ten, that's what you're going to get when you flip over those 1955s. I just have no idea how that one got away from me, but I'm happy to have it regardless. So, all right, let's keep going. What the what? <laughs> I don't know what this is. Look at this thing. Looks old. Oh, it's got a mint mark on it even. What the heck's it gonna be? Oh, look at that, 1957. Oh, I guess that's a find, technically. 57 Denver, not rare, not in good shape, but it is old, so we'll hold on to it. Why not? All right, I think we got a Canadian in here as well. Let's see if we can, yeah, 2000 Canadian. Let me check the collection real quick, see if we need that one or not. But that is the 2000 Canadian right there. And we do not need the 2000 Canadian. There's about 100 million of those made. So not rare by any means, but uh, still an interesting find. Keeps things interesting. I like to find Canadians. Some people don't just because, you know, they are worth less than... Uh, they're not worthless, but they are worth less than American coinage. So some people get upset about that, but it doesn't bother me too much. I liked a little bit of variety in my life, as they say. It's, uh, I believe someone said that it's the spice of life. All right, let's see what we got here. This looks a little bit older, so 70D. All right, what about this one? I had another one back up just in case. Uh, that one doesn't look too old, though, 84. All right, guys, it looks like that's probably going to do it for this roll, so I'll check for 2009s and get back to you. All right, here we go, guys. We do have a 2023. It's our first 2023, so we are going to be putting something into the collection today. 2023 Denver right there. Man, what a creepy picture of Jefferson on these modern coins, don't you guys think? Can't believe we've had them for about 20 years at this point. They started in 2006. I've always considered them like the brand new coin. Now they are almost 20 years old. That's crazy to think. All right, let's get on to the next one and see if we can grab ourselves a 2009 or something better. Whatever comes, I'll take it. All right, it looks like we got, what is that, back-to-back -back Canadians? I think we got another one right there, 2001. You know what? I was just on that page because obviously looking to see if we need the 2000. Let's see if we need that 2001. I feel like, oh, we don't. <laughs> I was like, I remembered the one next to the 2000 being empty. Oh, actually, look at that. So 2000P is a different coin than your typical 2000. Let's actually check that because I did not consider that when we first grabbed that 2000. It should be, I think, on the obverse. Let's see if we got a P on that bad boy. No, we do not. It would be underneath the bust of Queen Elizabeth if we did. And you can see that one is quite a bit more rare. Only 4.9 million of those made. That would definitely qualify for a key date if we were looking at the Jefferson Nichols. But uh, yeah, you can see much more rare about, what is that, 20 times more rare? So that's pretty crazy. We also do not need the 2001, even though that one does come in at quite a bit lower, only 30 million there. So, oh, wait a minute. We have 2001 possibility for 2001P as well, which, okay, there's a lot more of those. So we should be able to get that here, I would think. Let's see if we can get it, guys. Three, two, one. One, no, I do not see a P on that, surprisingly. So we just got the rarer one once again, unless I'm looking in the wrong spot, but I certainly don't think so. All right, I guess we just got another duplicate 2001, no mint mark there. So we'll just continue on and see what else we can get. Oh, I think we have a, yeah, we have a Canadian in this one for sure. Lots of Canadians this time around. And this one's going to be a 1995. I'll just double check. I really don't think we need that one. Pretty much the entire middle page of the collection is already full. Yeah, 1995, 78 million, so nothing crazy there. All right, right off the bat, I'm seeing something definitely looking older. Right there, it's got the color to it, it's got the look, and uh, definitely interested in that one. So hopefully we can get something cool here. Maybe another 1939, I wouldn't mind. All right, let's see what we got. Three, two, one. Oh, 48, all right, I'll take it. 
38 would have been preferable, but 48 I'll accept. <laughs> Let's see if there's gonna be anything else on this roll. Came out pretty nice, so we can just do a quick spread here. I see a 1960, so just almost made it as something we would hold on to, but other than that, no, not really seeing too much. So we'll get on to the next. Oh, I see something coming up here, guys. We got a 46, it looks like. Really kind of blended into the other ones. Well, okay, now it looks much older. I'll take it though, 46, we do have chances at all the mint marks. We can get Philadelphia, Denver, or San Francisco. I do like those San Francisco's, so let's see if we can get that, even though it's not super rare. Three, two, and one. Nope, no mint mark on that one, so 46 plain. Another one into the 40s. At this point, I think we have just as many 40s as we do 50s, that's pretty crazy. And uh, we do have that one 1939 from the beginning of the video. Hopefully we can expand into those 30s, like I said. I have been looking for the, oh, wait a minute. Oh no, <laughs> I think it's a 79. I thought it was a 39 for some reason, maybe because I was talking about it. But yeah, guys, been looking for those 38 and 39 Denvers for years, literally, and would love to be able to finally pull one today. I can't really remember the last time we put a Jefferson nickel into the collection. It's been a while for sure. That's definitely been, uh, you know, we're so close. It's like, that's why I love doing nickels again. There's a million reasons why I love nickels, but one of them is because it's one of the only collections that's actually possible still today to get in circulation. And uh, I know that Rob Finds Treasures is trying to do the same thing. He has done way more boxes than me. I think the only coin he still needs is that 1950 Denver. And I have now found two of those, which uh, my fans have, have made me well aware that he's probably a little bit jealous right now. But it's all in good fun. Let's see who is going to end up being the first one to fill that collection in. I mean... If I was a betting man, I'd probably go with Rob because he's he is hunting these coins like crazy. All he needs is that one coin to finish it off. Meanwhile, I'm over here. I still need a whole bunch of war nickels, some of the other key dates like 38, 39 Denver and the 1949S. Uh, but who knows? Maybe those will come out here pretty soon. I'm out of rolls. So it looks like we just hit the halfway point, guys. I'm going to grab some more rolls from the box here, and we'll get out of the next one. Oh, here's something. As soon as I opened the roll, I noticed that one. You see that? The head of Jefferson there. Very worn down head. Peeking out. Definitely going to be something older. Let's see what it is here. And boom. 54 once again. So that would be our third 1954 of the box. The other two were Denver. Let's see if we can get a San Francisco here. Boom. Nope, that one's a plane. So two Denvers and one plane. Still no San Francisco, but that's not too bad. That's uh, interesting, at least, that we're getting some older coins. Even if they do end up being the same year, that's all right with me. All right, let's see if there's going to be anything else in this roll. There's an older-looking one there. It's a 64. And what else do we... Oh, that there, there we go. We got another older coin right there. 48, I believe, can be a low mint, at least, if we get a San Francisco on it. Haven't found any San Francisco's yet today, but maybe this could be our first. Start a trend here. Let's go. Three, two, one. Nope, that is a 48 plane, so we'll take that. That is the, I think, second 48 plane we found. Not too bad, though. We just got two finds on this one roll, so I think we're heading in the right direction here, guys. Let's see what else we can get. Oh, my gosh, another 48. Right after we just got the last one. What's that? There's a 58 right there. All right, so actually we have chance, I think, two low mintage coins here. On the 48, once again, we're looking for the S. I'll have to confirm that that is a low mintage, but let's see if we can get an S anyway. Three, two, one. Nope, just another. Oh, I like the look of that one, though. Nice patina on that. It's a super worn down, cool, old style looking coin right there. 1948 plane. And of course, we do have a 58 po poking out right there. Let's just work our way towards that. Got a 64 there. I thought that might have been something. And I don't think there's going to be anything else on the way over there. There we go. 1958 in all of its glory. We're actually looking for no mint mark on this one to get that low mintage 1958. That 5 almost looks filled in as well. Kind of looks like a 3, so could be something there. All right, let's see if we get the Philadelphia here, guys. 3, 2, one. Nope, we got the Denver on that one as well. So still no low mintage coins for today's hunt. That's sort of unbelievable with all the finds that have been coming out here. Eventually, we should be hitting a low mintage or maybe even a key date coin here, but I guess time will tell. All right, looks like that's going to just about do it for this roll, guys. We'll go ahead and get on to the next. All right, what do we got here? I don't know if it's just the contrast. There's just some weird looking coins over here on this left side. I'm just checking real quick. That one sort of looks old. 
Let's see if that's going to be anything. Not the best looking coin in the world, that's for sure. Oh, it looked like it could have been a 39 there for a second. Oh, we got some color on this right side too. What is that going to be? I have no clue. Nothing really. It looks like just something modern. So take a peek here. What else we got in the roll? All right, this could be good. Certainly looks like a worn down edge right there. It's got some nice signs of wear on it for sure. It might just be nothing, but just in case, let's take a peek. Nah, it's nothing. All right. I thought we had like a buffalo there or something. That would have been awesome, but that's okay. Let's see what else we got in the roll. Okay. Interesting looking stuff here. The heck is that? 70 something? Nah, nothing too crazy, I don't think. Oh, wait, what the heck? We got a hold coin. That's pretty cool. 2016 for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe a election year, somebody put a hole in that coin, made a necklace out of it or something. Could be a whole bunch of different reasons, maybe just for the heck of it, for the fun of it. But somebody put a hole in that coin and it ended up in the roll. So kind of interesting, and we definitely have something older there. I love the color on it. Let's take a look at that. Again, no mint mark, so not going into the collection, unfortunately, but definitely an older coin. Let's see what it's going to be. Praying for a 38 here. Three two one 46 it is all right well we'll take that guys again big old pile of 40s accruing over there so i'm definitely happy about that all right guys let's see what else we got here it doesn't look like too much so we'll get out of the next okay there we go guys i was just gonna say looking at that pile over there i, I like to organize as i go we have been getting a lot of fines and i feel like at any point we're gonna hit it big now we got, just got a 1939, I can't even talk. We just got a 1939 right there, our second of the box. And again, this is actually a great shot at maybe putting a coin into the collection. Of course, a 39S and a 39 Denver are key dates. 39 Denver is the one we need. There is also the 39 Philly, which is way more common than all of those. So. More likely than not, that's what it's going to be, but we would love to see a mint mark, especially a Denver. Let's flip it over and see if we can get it, guys. Three, two, one. Uh, unfortunately, no mint mark on that one. We also want to look for that doubling on the Monticello because that's only on the 39 Phillies. Do not see it on that either. But two 39s in a box plus, well, I don't know, about 20 more rolls to go. That's not too bad. I feel like there's there's definitely some potential here for something really good. All right, taking a look at the rest of the roll real quick. Oh, wait a minute, what the heck is that? I just uncovered this one. What in the world? That is crazy. I've never seen damage like that before. Let's see if it's, <laughs> look at that, it's on this side too. So yeah, somebody really hates 64s, which I understand. I would love to know how they did that though. I think that's actually a pretty cool effect. All right, 64 it is, weird damage pattern. Let's see what else there is. Oh, what the heck? Really nice 63 here. Haven't seen anything else in the roll, but that is a heck of a nice 63. Let's see what we got for the reverse. Yeah, look at that. What do you guys think, full steps on that bad boy? That is a beauty. Probably gonna have to put that in a two by two. Really nice right there. That's awesome. I mean, not typically what we look for, but uh, I'll take it for sure. Could be a big money coin if we got full steps on that bad boy. Let's see what else we can find. Maybe. I don't know. Let's dump them out and find out. Oh, we got a Canadian for sure. Wait, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, I thought it was uh, maybe a little bit of an older Canadian, but no, it's an 83. Pretty common right there. This was the coin that was throwing me off, though. It Just by the edge, it looked pretty interesting. Pretty gross, to be honest. Uh, let's flip it over, though. 87. Can you imagine if it was a 37? That would make no sense whatsoever. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in here, guys. So we'll just get on to the next. Second, third coin in, just about. We got a 1946. I think that's like our fourth one. Are we going to get an S this time? That would be kind of nice. Let's see. Three, two... One. Nope, we are going to get a Denver, it looks like, so that's something. Definitely a very worn down 1946 right there. Let's add it to the pile. Actually, it looks like it, that is going to be our third. We also have three 1948s, which is just wild. But uh, let's see if there's going to be any more here. All right, we got a Denver right there. So this actually looks fairly good. Just checking the rest. That does look, well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Looks like it could be something though. Definitely not full steps. It's in pretty rough shape, but let's hope for something good here. Maybe a 38 or 39. Three, two, 
one. Oh, 55, not too bad, not too bad at all. So another 55 Denver, it's not gonna be the key date. Uh, obviously, it's got the Denver on it, so it's not gonna be that 55 plane. Looks like it's got a bit of damage there. It's called Jefferson Scarface, how about that? Thomas Scarface Jefferson. <laughs> That's pretty cool, but uh, yeah, I'll take it. 1955 Denver, and I think we've got about 10 rolls to go, so we are kind of winding down here, guys. I'm really hoping something big comes out here towards the end because, you know, so far, a lot of good stuff. There's been plenty of finds, just nothing, you know, no low mintages, no key dates yet. Uh, we did find that Canadian, which might be a proof. If that's the case, then that is absolutely amazing. We also find a, found a 1963, which may have full steps on it. Maybe we'll take a look at that at the end of the video. I do have a microscope we can check that out with. But yeah, guys, we got 10 more rolls to go. Hopefully we can get ourselves a key day or low mintage before the video ends. Okay, we got something. It's not gonna be rare, or low mintage, anything like that, but it's something, 1957. And it is a Denver mint mark. So pretty common, 50s coin right there, 1957D. I think it's the first that we found in this box though. So interesting, we're pretty much hitting every single year in the 40s and 50s, except for, you know, that 42, 43, 44, 45, those war nickel years. Although actually now that I think about it, we do have a 1942, it's just not silver, unfortunately. All right guys, so after this roll, we will have 10 remaining. This is roll number 11 from the end. Let's see if it's gonna bring us any luck here. And if not, you know what I think I'm gonna do is flip over to the key date and low mintage side of the placemat, see if that gives us any luck, because sometimes it does. How about that, that looks a little bit older. Let's just do a quick flip, nah, it's just an 82. Got anything else in here? Tough to say, I don't think we do guys, so. We'll go ahead and get on to the next one. I'll flip that placemat over and hopefully we can turn our luck around. All right, here we go, let's dump these out. Big old pile of nickels going on right there. Flip it on over to the key date low mintage side, just like we began this video over here because I think that that is a helpful side to be on for sure, especially if you wanna know exactly what you're looking for. And it looks like I was right, that 48S does appear on that low mintage list. So anytime you find a 48, you are looking for the San Francisco. Uh, nothing else appears on our lists though, so that is kind of the one that you wanna see. We do have a few 48s, none of them with that San Francisco yet. Although, what do we have here? We do have an older coin for sure. I see a few Denvers actually in this uh, roll. Okay, that one is a Denver. I thought we might have an S there, uh, but it is a Denver. So at least we have a chance at that 38, 39 that we desperately need. Let's see what it's gonna be. Three, two, one. All right, 59. I was actually expecting a 60s on that one, so I will take it. It's a couple more points on the board for this box. How about this one right here? We got another Denver. I think there's at least three in this roll, so let's flip that one over. 63, so that's nothing. I do see one more right here. They all came out like this. Let's see if that's going to be anything for us. Three, two, and oh, it's sticky. 64, okay, so they got progressively worse, but that's okay, guys. We have a few more rolls to go here. I'm gonna check these ones here to see if we missed anything. And uh, just keep your hopes high. I know something good's coming. Older looking coin there for sure. Let's just flip it. Oh, 57, not bad. So we'll take that. Another coin going into the pile. We got another Denver reverse right here as well. Let's see, 64. And coming down to the end here. Guys, we still have not found any 2009s. We have two rolls left. Bunch of 40s, bunch of 50s. We got two 1939 Phillies and zero 2009s. Zero low mintage, zero key dates. So nothing uh, going into the Jefferson nickel collection so far. Let's see if we can change our luck here. Let's just do these last two rolls live and see if anything's gonna pop out for us here at the end. All right, so I have been flipping. I've been flipping like crazy, looking for those 2009s. There's a Denver reverse. Get something here. Nope, 62. Let's find a 2009 at least. I usually average about one per box, so I guess it's not the craziest thing in the world. Hey, look at that, 2023 Philly. I have actually found a whole bunch of the 2023 Denvers, and that's our first Philly, so we will be putting both 2023s into the collection today. That's at least a good sign. All right, what do we got here? It looks like it uh, could be older. And we'll flip. 1980 it is, so not gonna be older. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, that one looks older for sure. So we got some chances here at the end, guys. That's not gonna go into the collection because it is a Philly, but could be something though. Let's see. 
Maybe we'll get a 1950 here. That'd be nice. Three, two, one. Oh, 61. You got to be kidding me. All right, a few more coins here in second from the end. Let's see if we can snag anything else. There's a 74. I thought it was going to be a little older than that. And that is going to do it for roll number two from the end. And here is our final roll, guys, our final chance at something. Key date, low mintage, anything going into the collection. Still haven't seen a buffalo in a long, long time. I'm definitely going to pick up some more nickels, guys. I do love looking through nickels. I feel like there's an urgency. We should try to complete this collection if we can, even though it's going to be very difficult. We are missing quite a few, but I think it can be done. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up some nickels. Hey, there we go. 1958 Denver coming out as one of the last finds. So that may be the last find of the hunt, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see here. See if this last roll is going to produce anything else for us. All right, guys, coming down to the wire here. I still have 26 rolls of that box uh, that I pulled 24 out for my 2024 video where I looked through 24 rolls of each coin. I still have 26 rolls from that box sitting behind me here. I'll definitely have to do a video on those because who knows, maybe another 50 Denver's coming out. That would be great. But it looks like that's going to do it for that box, guys. I'll go ahead and tally up the points, get a nice spreadsheet here of everything that we found and we'll do a wrap up. All right guys, welcome to the wrap up on today's video. We do have to start with the coins that are gonna be going into the collection. Of course today that's only gonna be our 2023s. So we do not have those yet. We do have spaces for them right there though. So we'll just slide those in really quick. There's our 2023 P and our 2023 Denver. So just on the lookout for the 2024s now that uh, tis the season, I guess you could say. And then right here, I do want to take a look at that 1963. We're going to look for full steps on that. So let's take a look at that one underneath the microscope. We'll just slide it on under here. So there is our obverse. You can see really nice looking 1963 coin right there. Not really any blemishes whatsoever. Of course, we are going to be interested in that reverse. So let's flip it over to the other side and put it up under the scope here and take a look at the steps on the Monticello there. We're looking for full steps. We want every single one of those steps to show for us. I don't know. I want to say no, but you guys let me know down in the comments below what you think. I figured I'd give you this extra view here so you could see for yourself if you think it's going to be full steps. Definitely worth putting in a 2x2 two two either way, though. Really nice looking coin. I mean, look at the shine on that bad boy. And it's almost like the only blemishes are on the steps. You can see some little marks there, which uh, is unfortunate. But that's, I guess, just how it goes sometimes. That's why those full steps are so difficult to find. Now, for our point totals, you can see everything pretty much came from these top three sections here. Jefferson Nichols from the 1950s. We got a whole bunch of those, 54, 55, 57, 58, 59. So most of the dates, nothing in the early 50s though. That's really where the low mintage and key date stuff is. And then almost an equal amount from the 1940s. At one point they were tied, but you can see 40. 42 is definitely the coolest one. Then we got a whole bunch of 46s and look at those 48s. That is a big stack of 1948 so those are worth four points a piece and then this was very very fun to find from the 30s we did get two 1939s each with a chance at getting that double die unfortunately neither one of them had it but when you put it all together you get a grand total of 72 points not too bad not too good kind of mid honestly and uh, we did find a couple of other cool things though in 2016 with a hole in it this weird damage pattern on this 1964 which I don't blame them I don't like 64s either and then we got this nice maize and blue coin right here I think that's probably one of the coolest things that I've ever found at least when it comes to colored coins and then look down here we got six Canadians none of them are uh, of any rarity other than the one that we put into the collection which may or may not be approved and in case you forgot what that looked like there it is guys in all of its glory 1982 into the collection really shiny coin right there i think that's an awesome find definitely looks good in the collection either way so at least we got some improvements we got some 2023s into the collection overall not too bad but i certainly would like to find some low mintage key date coins on the next one real quick guys before i end the video just want to remind you if you're interested in picking up one of these nickel roll hunting placemats to aid you in your own nickel roll hunting you can head on over to quidscoins.com i'll put links down in the description below i also have penny and silver second placemats up there for you as well but anyways that's going to pretty much do it for this one thank you so much for watching make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new because i post new videos like this every single week always bring you along with the hunts and having a good time and as always i'm quinn and this is quinn's coin signing out and i will see you in the next episode of coin quest nickels